Hey everyone, I'm Dave for Gamers on Games, and welcome to the first episode of the Wizards of the Woke series. This is going to be another episode dealing with Avenger and his juvenile attempts at writing and edgelording. I will warn everyone that there is potentially triggering material contained therein, and I am sorry in advance to anyone and everyone who gets upset by it. But before I get into that, I do want to address two other things that have happened recently that need bringing up. Not only because they're connected to this, but also because it shows that there is a systemic problem and it is resulting in lost life. So very shortly after Venger dropped this, well, abomination for lack of a better term, two major events happened. We had a racially motivated mass shooting in Buffalo and a massive dump of Dave Johnson's worst self. So we have hate and QAnon talking points spewed here by Venger. We have blatant unquestionable hate spewed by Dave Johnson and then a mass shooting in Buffalo. Am I saying Dave Johnson and Venger told him to go shooting people? No. Dave and Derek are symptoms of an out-of-control problem on the right. It's been growing for decades, it isn't anything new, but only in recent years has it finally exploded and thrown off its veil of carefully crafted words and revealed the true monster it is. Conservative values that really aren't. States' rights used to strip people of inherent freedoms and rights because somehow morality is dependent upon geographical location. The constant, if you don't like it, move somewhere else, which is privilege at its most obvious and assuming everyone can just pick up stakes at any given time and they'll be fine or it'll be easy. I'm sure most of you are hoping to hear me talk more about Star for Tears and Eugenesis writer and the absolutely toxic mess dropped about him and I'll get to it but as of this recording Dave Johnson has had all of his work removed from drive through RPG and one bookshelf it's a good start at the very least oh and speaking of removals what we're going to talk about in this video was also removed from drive through RPG and while he'll scream to the rafters free speech and freedom of expression remember drive through RPG is a private company and as a private company has terms of service which users and content producers must abide by. If they do not like the content or the creator, the content is subject to removal or banning. If you do not like those rules, you are welcome to find other avenues to get your content out there. Also on a fun note, as I'm putting this episode together, Dave Johnson has gone from Twitter and Facebook and Justin Lanasa's Mario account has also been nixed. Yeah, with shooters echoing the talking points of pundits like Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson, there's no shying away anymore. Oh, and for everyone who sat through all that and thought, politics needs to stay out of gaming, you're really going to hate this episode because Derek Nashaw has dropped nothing but politics and virtue signaling into this piece. And he's speaking to your side. Isn't it curious? How those who scream they don't want politics in gaming are the same people screaming bloody murder when their politics gets them removed from private platforms. Alright, all that preamble out of the way, let's dive into the text. So, first off, the cover. You're looking at it right now. For those only listening to the audio, the title is The Good Sumerian and depicts a demon getting ready to kill a baby. So already, this hits one of my triggers because, as stated numerous times previously, violence against children is one of my hard passes. So in case you can't tell, we're dealing with sacrificing babies and young children by and to demons. This is obviously in line with multiple anti-Semitic tropes, but also goes hand in hand with Pastor Jack Hibbs, who calls Democrats a death cult. So to me, this is more of what Derek buys into. So let's talk about the title first. Obviously the title is a play on the Good Samaritan, which could be reference to the law or to the Bible story. The law goes like this. 
Good Samaritan laws offer legal protection to people who give reasonable assistance to those who are or whom they believe to be injured, ill, in peril, or otherwise incapacitated. The Bible story, in short, is about a Jewish traveler ignored by passers-by until a Samaritan helps him. One of the people who passes by the traveler is a Jew, and this story itself is frequently invoked as a way to stereotype and engage anti-Semitism. Regarding the image of the demon, several people I went through this document with believe the artist is trying to make it look like one of the freeze frames of AOC that the right likes to use for memes. Considering the author, I'm inclined to believe this is the case. Alright, moving on to the next page. Alright, so here we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of all this. So, before we get to the quote-unquote adventure, Derek needs to bludgeon us all with how great it is that women are losing bodily autonomy, and this whole song and dance is to commemorate that. We've accurately portrayed and established the character of Avenger Satanus, so the fact that he's basing his entire adventure around the overturning of abortion isn't surprising. It is more of his race to the bottom of the barrel mentality. Take a moment to note how he declares triumphantly that this will return to the states for them to decide based on geographic location. So, states, rights. Now, where have I heard that before? Oh, right, slavery. Yep. Once again, conservatives are taking the worst ideas possible and making sure we are all aware that they are states' rights. So, because Venger has opened up the door to his love of states' rights and about his anti-choice stance, this allows me to break out my soapbox and deliver a rebuttal. So, here we go. To people supporting states' rights as the way to go on abortion, I ask you this. Does good and evil vary based on geography? Is slavery bad because it happens in New Jersey, but the same slavery happening in Georgia is just fine? Is denial of the right to vote because of the state you live in change moral equivalents? If where you live in the United States determines your validity as a person and the rights do you, then this country deserves rethought, reformatting, and a new moral compass. Regarding some points brought up by the anti-choicers, even if you grant personhood to the collection of cells, zygote, fetus, or unborn baby, its personhood and collective life experience of null and its theoretical personhood doesn't outweigh the collective life experience and established personhood of the mother. Furthermore, no person, including the collection of cells, zygote, fetus, baby, gets access to a woman's body against her consent. Forcing a woman of non-consensual pregnancy to carry to term is abuse. It is prolonged psychological and emotional trauma of the victim, and is in fact re-victimizing them. Furthermore, there are states with laws that grant rapists rights to a child born from the rape, which ties the victim to her rapist together longer, potentially for life. Another point I want to make is that when you look at the way pro-lifers talk about their protection of life, then started throwing around potential laws that will institute the death penalty for abortion clinic workers, doctors, or pregnant persons seeking the procedure, the lack of internal consistency is laid bare. Remember, conservatism is primarily about hurting liberals. Why do you think owning the libs and triggering the libs is so damned important to them? It's all they have. Seriously, I could go down every single point anti-choice religious zealots have for their terrorism, but that would make this video about that instead of about Venger's latest abomination. Oh, and I use the term due to the multitudes of homicides, bombings, and violent riots that they've evoked over the years. So yeah, anti-choice extremists are domestic terrorists. Getting back to the text. Under the backstory, you'll see that the players are given a vermilion and black crystal. 
Now, an interesting thing I think I've discovered. I may in fact be colorblind to this shade. I see vermilion as more orange than red. And to me, this makes the crystal a dog whistle to the super straight movement. Others I discuss this with see vermilion as more red or rosy than orange. And the vermilion in black is a Nazi dog whistle. So there is that, but the crystal itself, some are seeing as QAnon itself in that it imparts wisdom and insight beyond what others see. On to the next page, we get introduced to the wicked sister cities of Saddam and Gomorrah. Obviously, Sodom and Gomorrah. And though the actual reason for the destruction of biblical cities has nothing to do with homosexuality, that hasn't stopped the interpretation to stick despite passages in Ezekiel disputing that. Keep in mind, the cities were destroyed because people wanted to rape angels, and to protect angels, Lot hands the crowd his daughters. And remember, Lot is regarded as a quote-unquote good man. Keep that in mind the next time you defend that the Bible is appropriate for children and lessons to live by. If people come to your door to rape your guests, just give them your daughters. I'm sure your daughters will throw you a feast and the local police will give you a medal. So it is worth noting that he calls the cities dictatorial havens of base immorality and wanton perversion. So there's a few things going on in this dug up dog whistle. First off is the conservative talking point that liberals are fascists who want to destroy freedom. And secondly is the conservative love of labeling cities, namely New York and Los Angeles, as leftist hubs of depravity. As opposed to their over idealized vision of middle America, considering where Derek lives, this fits neatly into his little pigeonhole. The shadowy collective of oligarchs is a blatant deep state dog whistle. Are you catching on with theme yet? This is why so few take him seriously, unless they're as far down the rabbit hole as him. The homeless shelter reference is an unabashed reminder of how much conservatives hate helping out people who are less fortunate. Remember, everything with conservatives is about pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Despite Despite what Jesus and true Christianity says about helping the poor, you'll see this again when he writes, Do not struggle to change their living conditions or improve their lot in life. And his remark, When they aren't complaining about too few cherry piles atop their decadent cheesecake, reeks of the avocado toast trope conservatives scream about with millennials and younger generations. It's curious how the conservative movement can't seem to get out of its own way when it comes to criticizing how modern generations live and work, especially when they're trying to live and work rather than live to work. But this fits in nicely with puritanical and protestant work ethic, which overemphasizes the value of a person is proportional to the work output they create. In short, they're only as useful as the money you can make for someone else. This is also why basic living wages, minimum wages, health benefits, retirement for working in lower classes, and anything else that doesn't benefit the rich or can be explained away as your true reward is in heaven as is looked down upon by conservatives. Moving on. The payment of 30 pieces of gold is a stand-in for 30 pieces of silver, which is a reference to Judas Iscariot selling out Jesus to the Romans. Also, this is not so subtle nod to anti-Semitism, and to attempt to top this anti-Semitic crap, they equate 30 pieces of gold to $1,500. I assume they mean United States dollars which I've been informed is the same amount as a stimulus check. On page 4 of the PDF, we come to the caravan. Obvious characters of what conservatives think abortion is like, and their inability to understand the differences between abortion and actual infanticide. 
and I think this not only highlights how mind-bogglingly dumb Venger is, but how asinine the right wing's movement is. When they keep claiming things like people delivering their babies, looking at it, and then telling the doctors to kill it, and these stories are always told to make the decision sound like it's as flippant as possible. I haven't found a single piece of evidence where this was done or ca done casually. I am aware of parents making hard decisions regarding care, treatment, or accepting the required passing of a child born into a situation in which it has little to no chance of survival or quality of life. Anencephaly is definitely one that springs to mind. The caravan member who killed a woman and stole her baby to sell it is a classic blood libel against Jews. So with this much blood libel, it feels pretty safe to say Venger has gone full anti-Semitic and possibly aspires to Nazi standards. His constant use of tropes that have targeted Jews across the world for generations screams volumes. If he's not, I'd love to see him prove it because this document is doing him no favors. Also, Entry 4 reeks of minority stereotype. It also doubles as how the conservatives view liberals, particularly younger liberals. In particular, he's going for abortions are a casual medical procedure. Having gone through the process with someone, it isn't. It is absolutely terrifying. Entry 5 is the, what if you abort Jesus, fallacy. It's interesting while covering this, that as my associates and I dissected this, the questions about why demons are sacrificing babies and humanoids of infernal heritage all seem to be the good guys. Some of us were confused assuming the infernal humanoids and demons would be considerably similar, if not just outright the same thing. However, one associate laid it out that the infernal heritage beings are Derek's self-insert via his Venger Satanus personality. Explain the Dileth similarity to his own. If that skeeved you out, you're not alone. Also, quick aside, why did he have to drag John Carpenter into this? The eye patch mercenary screams Snake Plissken. What did John Carpenter ever do to you to deserve being written into your crappy fiction? Under the section for the hook, he refers to his Sodom and Gomorrah stand-ins as collectivist shitholes. This is a one-two punch as the collectivist part is right-wing signaling for liberals are all sheep, while shitholes is an obvious callback to Trump's opinion of Africa. Which gets back to racism, proving that Venger is again a okay with racism. Oh, and in case the callback to Africa isn't good enough, the commentary about terrorists is definitely a call against Islamic terrorism, as the terrorists in Venger's write up here are coming from the outside. This is a telling look into Venger's psyche, as he doesn't see domestic hate groups as domestic terrorists, because why would he? The entire document has been a love letter to them. Oh, and quick aside, Venger, I'm only this far in and had to lay out this much commentary on your, well, hate speech wrapped in an attempt at a game. Do you finally understand why Misty Mountain Games banned you? Why Drive Through RPG took this down? Alright, let's get back to this. The Holy Mission is more biased confirmation regarding how religious zealots see themselves when they harass pregnant people already having a difficult time with their decision. Oh, and quick aside, just remember the Bible says life begins at breath, not at conception. So again, Christian extremists can't even figure out their own religion. The money in concert with child murder is just more blood libel and good old-fashioned anti-Semitism as it harkens back to Jewish hoarding tropes. Alright, so I think we all get this at this point, because going through this script this far has been agonizing enough. The writing is subpar, like high school freshman level. The dog whistling and overt hatred is everywhere undeniable. So to wrap this up, 
Let's do the writing's general themes and tones. First, incel psychology and sociopathy at play, the aggressively fragile masculinity under appreciation for their inflated sense of self, the disparagement of women and sex workers, all the biggest quote-unquote anti-abortionists, but in reality anti-infanticide personalities in this write-up are infernals, which is a Avenger self-insertion to browbeat the audience into an I'm right, you're all wrong and loathsome for not agreeing with me mentality. The work is racist, classist, anti-Semitic, false, an empty Christian persecution complex, misogynistic, and loaded with incel and QAnon talking points. So overall, just another episode highlighting how Avengers propping up of this garbage. Him repeating Tucker Carlson and QAnon talking points and generally adding to the atmosphere that causes violence like what we saw in Buffalo, Dallas, and Laguna Woods. Am I saying Avenger directly inspired or caused the shootings listed? No. Am I saying he's contributing in his own way to an atmosphere headed by Alex Jones, Tucker Carlson, Ben Shapiro, and Nick Fuentes? Based on what I've seen here and from what I've seen him post, broadcast, and the comments he leaves or attempts to leave on my channel, yeah, I believe he fully subscribes to QAnon beliefs, right-wing talking points, and is accepting of the means to achieve those ends. If I had to give it a rating on a five-star scale, I would demand stars be given to me, as I feel I'm owed them just for reading and covering this sloppy mess. So thank you to everyone who endured this with me. Good lord, this sucked. And lucky me, I get to do this all over again soon, as I've got to start covering the Dave Johnson mess soon. As always, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, if you really like me and appreciate what I'm doing, you know, throw me a tip via Patreon. As for me, I'm going to go and drink heavily. This is Dave for Gamers on Games and Wizards of the Woke sub-segment. I'm out.